Here's a dash six and it does not thread in. That, that's actually dangerous. If you get a pump, you probably send some pistons right out the exhaust system. Okay, now let's have some fun. We're gonna kick some serious ass. So let's put this baby in. Hi everyone, welcome to AM Electronics. Kirk Miller here, and today we're gonna to be talking about fuel pumps. You know we make a lot of different products here at AM Electronics. Our engine management systems, our widebands, our water meth. All those products are control mechanisms or feedback mechanisms. And the fuel pump is sort of the unsung hero of all the products that we offer. And regardless of your engine management system or your wideband or whatever you're talking about to control things, if you can't get the fuel up to the engine, up to the injector, no matter what you throw at it, it's not gonna matter. So, the fuel pump really, truly is the foundation of making power. You're gonna get to see what goes into making a pump, what separates our pump from the counterfeits and some of our competitors, and also a lot of the testing and engineering that goes into it. One of the things I wanna to touch on is the fact that we don't just go out, find a good pump someplace, rebrand it, stick it in a box and put it on the shelf and then you purchase it. It's not even remotely close. There's engineering that goes into the product to make sure that the flow is where it's supposed to be, the pressure relief valve, the testing that goes into the durability testing, third party testing by labs, all done outside of us so we don't get too connected or too emotionally involved with the outcome of a test. And then in addition to that, as the materials that are used are chosen inside the pump to live in the environment that it's designed to live in, meaning, we talk about E85 and methanol and ethanol, all these different fuels. We choose materials that can live in an environment where there's extremely low lubricity. Our pumps can live in 100% ethanol and methanol or different type of exotic fuels, all because of the materials chosen. A lot of the pumps that are out there right now, off the shelf pumps or just replacement pumps, they are designed to live with pump gas not with a low lubricity fuel like ethanol or methanol. A lot of people don't realize it, but gasoline really does have a decent level of lubricity to it. Without further ado, I wanna sort of jump into the pumps, and then I'm gonna bring in JC, and he's gonna walk you through the bench, and he's also gonna to touch on something toward the tail end of it is the pitfalls of pump installation. We have an extremely low warranty rate on our pumps, and the pumps that do come back in for a warranty claim, many times we find that there's been some installation challenges. So JC is gonna share with you some of the things to avoid. So when you do the installation up front, it's done once, it's done right, and you get the performance that you're looking for. And frankly, you paid for it. Okay, so what we have here are a couple different types of pumps. We've got the good, we've got AEM in-tank pump, we've got an inline, we're gonna go into that a little bit. And then we have the bad and the ugly. These are counterfeits, you'll notice they're in knockoff AEM packaging. We're gonna go into the components there as well. And then even some of the counterfeits, they don't even have AEM packaging, but inside, again, as you'll see, there's an AEM counterfeit pump. Disgusting. So to the good stuff. Okay, we're gonna start with the in-tank pump. There's two types of pumps that we offer for our in-tank. Both iterations are 340 liters at 40 PSI. The one separation is, is that you'll notice some of our pumps have a green cap and then some, some have a black. So the black cap is indicating that it's good for regular pump gas, not an ethanol or E85 environment. The green cap indicates that it's, a, it's an all fuel pump. So it can live in E85, ethanol, methanol, even at 100% race fuels. It doesn't care where it lives because as mentioned earlier, the materials were chosen to live there. They can survive that harsh environment with a lack of lubricity. So I'm gonna open this up, show you what the pump looks like inside. There's always a seal that you know from us and they always look for the part number and the barcode on the top. And you'll notice green filter, insulator kit, hose, clamps, worm drive clamps, instructions, and then the pump itself. Our pumps, every pump, is flow tested to ensure that it meets our spec at manufacturing. And then also the PRV, the pressure relief valve, is tested as well. So these are tests that are performed on every single pump that goes out our door. As mentioned, the pumps are all flow tested, so that means test fluid runs through these. So on occasion, uh, there'll be some fluid in the bag itself, or when you lift the caps off, there'll be some fluid leaks. So if you've just got your pump and you're really excited to open it up, make sure that you're in an area that can accommodate maybe a couple drips of test fluid. So you don't wanna you know, get it on your clothing or anything like that, as silly as that sounds. Okay, so we're gonna leave this pump sealed up in this sealed bag, because we're actually gonna cut it open for you, mount it in the tank, and run it across our flow bench so you can see right from the box to the bench and you can see some flow numbers. Okay, so next up is our inline. I'll refer to it as a jack of all trades. 
It can be mounted in the tank, submerged in fuel. It can be mounted outside of the tank. Because it's a, a, a roller vane pump, it actually has positive displacement, which means it has a lift capability. So it can lift fuel out of a tank. Uh, it can live in virtually all fuels. It doesn't care. Diesel, race fuel, pump gas, 100% ethanol, methanol, it doesn't care. So this is a really, really robust pump inside and out. And like I said, it can fit in a lot of different places. This pump is our 400 liter pump. It flows 400 liters at 40 PSI. That's the, sort of the industry standard, 40 PSI. Most people put their flow rates at that. You bought the pump, let's see what comes inside. Quick unboxing. Uh, as a reminder, you always wanna see the part number, UPC code, and work order number on the end. That's sort of a, a tell with regard to a legit pump versus a counterfeit. I need one of those knives like everyone else has, one of those cool things. No, 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 I don't wanna use that. All right. You get your fittings for your wire, and also kind of critical, these little rubber boots. If your pump is mounted in tank and sitting proud of the pump, you don't want anything coming across the top of the pump and shorting out the post. So these little rubber insulators are a nice little add. One of the things that we always strive, like everything's in the box, you don't have to go looking for parts. And that's just a little added safety feature. Uh, check valve sits at the outlet. So that holds your line pressure, your rest pressure. Our beautiful, beautiful inline pump. Vacuum sealed again. You can see that there might be some fluid. These are all tested uh, at the point of manufacturing. So there's, there's a good chance there'll be test fluid in here. So when you do relieve the vacuum, uh, be aware that you can get a couple drips out of the pump when you pull the caps as well. We're talking about our inline, right? There's actually two iterations. And I talked about how awesome this was, our first release, because it had the AN fittings in and out. Well, you know, the day we do that, the day we release it, is the day that we start getting phone calls. I want metric. I have a European vehicle, and I want to keep the metric fittings because I want to replace my Bosch 044 style pump. That being said, we reacted. Here we are with a Bosch 044 envelope, the outer M1815 inlet. And on the outlet, it's a M12 or 12 millimeter with a 1.5 pitch as well. Check valve integrated. And again, a lot of these pumps, they use banjo bolts on the out uh, for the high pressure out. So if I take this off, you'll see that the check valve itself actually will accommodate a banjo bolt and an acorn cap. This is a, you know, basically a direct replacement, but higher flow, higher volume than a Bosch 044 OEM pump. That's for you guys in the European world. This will meet your needs. So you've now had an introduction to our both in-tank and our inline pumps and the fuels they can live in and how they should be installed and such. Now I want to get to something, a subject that I just, I, I have to share, but I absolutely hate this part. Um, it's counterfeits and knockoffs. So when you've come to the point of making a buying decision, if you selected AEM products, you, we want to make sure that you get our products. So it's highly recommended that if you're going to buy from an auction platform, that you cross check to our dealer locator, aemelectronics.com. There's a dealer locator. You can go into your area. There's authorized retailers on there. There's distributors on there from all over the world. Please go there find who you want to buy from and buy from them. Or if you're buying from an auction site that you're comfortable with, please cross-reference to make sure that, that business is on our authorized dealer list. If they're not, be aware that we can't guarantee or ensure that you're going to get AEM OEM product. All that being said, let's dig into these counterfeits. In-tank pump, inline pump, another iteration of the counterfeit in unmarked packaging. These are all counterfeit pumps. These are things that we bought off of big auction sites. Amazon, eBay, and such. One of the first tells on a counterfeit is that there's usually no UPC or part number on the end of the box. This is kind of tragic. It looks a lot like an AEM fuel pump, but these are made so poorly outside of the bench performance that we're gonna share with you, this is crazy. It says dash 10 in, dash six out, just like ours. Here's a dash six, and it does not thread in. This is phenomenal. And this is, you're gonna know this right away. Same here on this end, doesn't go in. So it's not threaded properly, doesn't match what's on the pump. And that is where you say, the fittings don't fit. If they don't fit, stop. There's a, definitely a problem. The same with the in-tanks. Some have the packaging that's really reminiscent of ours. Again, no part number, no UPC, no warning. A pump that looks a lot like ours, our logo, the green cap, and we put this across their bench, the PRV, the flow, the, the current consumption, not even, rem, not even close to what we have in our pump. So this is a subpar pump. It's gonna give you subpar performance and it could lead to anything from a poor performing engine where you can't make the power, you can't figure out why you can't keep your fuel pressure or worse. If you don't have safeties in place, 
catastrophic engine failure, meltdown. What I want to do now is I want to bring you a little deeper into the development on the pumps and what goes into it. So we have the validation, I call it a validation bench, but it's actually a development bench uh, that, that JC uses for testing and validating, quantifying uh, the changes that are made to make sure we're headed in the right direction. So without further ado, I'm going to grab JC and walk over to the bench. So John, I want you to, I want you to dig into this thing a little bit. You know, the impetus behind it, we know. Um, but just dig into some of the components that are included here, but then also what you do when you're, when you're on. Thanks, John. We have the fuel tank. We use B16 Bosch test fluid, so it mimics gasoline exactly. I've actually tested with gasoline and tested with the Bosch fluid, and they're right on top of each other in terms of performance. The bench, we use high-precision blind set meters to measure the fuel flow at whatever pressure we would like. AEM fuel pressure regulators control the pressure. These little levers here bleed off pressure so I don't take a bath in fuel anytime I pull a pump out. AEM fuel filters. And we can test in-tank pumps. On the backside, we can test the external pumps back there. And we could run three pumps at one time if we want to. So every batch of pumps that comes in the door, I pull 10 pumps out, we run them across the bench. We want to deliver to you exactly what we say we're going to deliver. So that's just another check in our quality control here. Here we go. Okay, we have something. This is a stock. We fit it with stainless steel fittings. We mimic the fuel basket by installing the pump in the basket. And the pump fitting goes into the O-ring just like an OEM fuel basket. So we have no leakage and no degradation of flow and that works for everyone. We also, what's really important is making sure you're getting the proper voltage to the pump. We have a power supply down here. This is at 13.6 volts. I have two flow solenoids with check valve. One is pressure regulated, one is not pressure regulated. So we calibrate this bench every time we go ahead and do a fuel pump test. So I have some back end equipment here that helps make sure that that happens. Let's take a trip down the flow path of an in-tank pump. As I showed you, we would mount the pump on this stock, drop it in. There's 12 gallons of B16 in here. We discharge out of the discharge hose. We have pressure sensor, fuel filter, another pressure sensor, flow meter, another pressure sensor, then a T to an AEM fuel pressure regulator, out the regulator, and then a return back to the tank. There's a couple things on here that I didn't talk about, but they're for safety. So here's a ball valve. We turn the ball valve off so that while we're running a test, we maintain pressure. Why do I have so many pressure sensors? One, I need to know if the filter's plugging up. So I watch the differential of pressure between pressure sensor one and pressure sensor two. And if I have more than two PSI of pressure differential across the filter, then I know the filter's plugging up and to go ahead and replace it. Okay, now let's have some fun. This is an off-the-shelf AEM pump, and uh, it's the one Kirk showed you earlier, so we'll put this on the test bench and let's see how she does, okay? Incredibly important, run a pre-filter. These pumps depend on RPM. Well, if you have something holding the pump back, like dirt or contamination, you're not gonna have the RPM, therefore you're not gonna have the flow that you expect out of the pump. Run the pre-filter. Correct wire, it's a one-way deal. Just snap it in and away we go. Before we uh, start the pump, we're gonna start Infinity Tuner. We're gonna do a data log of what we're about to do for you as well. We're on pump circuit two. This is where you're gonna pay attention. This is flow. These are the pressures involved. Remember pressure one, two, and three. This is a pressure differential across pump circuit two. I have current on pump. This is a raw value and that's actual amps that you're going to see. I'm not running a calibration solenoid. That's that solenoid that I showed you earlier for doing the calibration of the actual bench on a flow test. So we're going to go direct to the flow meter. We got AEM doing the data log here. So let's turn the pump on and see how we do. This pump actually flows in a little more. You see it's at 42 psi and we're at 348, 350 liters per hour. Okay, there's the AEM pump. Let's test the POS counterfeit. AEM box, looks like counterfeit, same setup. We're gonna kick some serious ass and we're gonna test a really knockoff pump for you. Okay, let's see how we do. Same pressure, look, it's actually a little lower because this pump does not have the power to generate the same pressure as the AEM pump did. I didn't touch the regulator 
And so one of the first telltale signs is, is you see slightly lower pressure. That means the pump doesn't have the nuts to push the fuel. As you can see by the flow, that, that's actually dangerous. If you get a pump that you think is 340 liters an hour and you put that thing in, then your engine is going to have a serious problem. You probably send some pistons right out the exhaust system. Just to validate something, I'll show you the voltage where you didn't touch anything. So the voltage is still 13.6 at the power supply. Yeah, use that pump, cook your motor, spend a lot of money you didn't need to for the sake of 20 bucks, big deal. So we recorded this uh, fuel pump test in AEM data and I have the AEM fuel pump and the counterfeit fuel pump. What you're gonna notice is a drastic difference in flow. So let me point out what we got here, okay? This red is the counterfeit pump. It's about 270 liters per hour. Look at the difference. This is the AEM pump. And this one actually at this particular point was flowing 344 liters an hour. The pressure are these two small lines here. The lower line is the counterfeit pump. The upper line is the AEM pump. And that small pressure differential indicates that the counterfeit pump did not have the power to move the fluid. Voltage, pressure, Everything's the same, except you're blowing up engine when you run the counterfeit piece. I want to show you a little demonstration on how voltage affects the flow of the pump. So watch and see what happens to that flow as I do this. There's 12 and a half. The pressure's still right around 40. It's just like that counterfeit pump. And look at that, 12 and a half, we've lost 45 liters an hour. Let's go to 11 and a half, two volts, and you get to the, where the counterfeit pump was. So maybe that's what they intend you to do is run it at two volts less. Why don't you just sort of run through the gamut of some of the things you've seen that caused premature failures with the pump, and then uh, some of the things you can do to, to keep yourself from you know, winding up in that position. We alluded to the pre-filter and contamination by far is the number one problem we find with both the in-tank and the positive displacement pump. Another thing, fuel hoses. Most of the in-tank pumps rely on an O-ring and snap into the basket. There are a couple applications where either a nylon uh, fuel hose is used or a rubber fuel hose is used. Where a nylon hose is used, sometimes people don't install the nylon hose correctly. A lot of people think you heat the hose up to install it onto the nipple and that actually compromises the hose. It'll, it'll slide on easily and then fuel will leak between the hose and the nipple and you won't get proper flow. Rubber hoses, if you use incorrect hose, not hose intended for in-tank use, over time it'll degrade, it'll rupture, and then you'll have a lack of fuel pressure and fuel flow because of that as well. Wiring, I can't stress it, you have to have correct gauge wiring and make sure you have proper voltage at the pump. Otherwise, it's not going to perform as expected. Fuel filters, you have an external pump, you have a fuel filter that's plugging up. As I pointed out, if you have low flow or you have a high pressure differential across your filter, then you're not gonna get the fuel to the injectors like you need to have it in the first place. I'm gonna show you some things on installing fittings on our external pumps. We have a lot of cases where they just twist the pump body and the end cap completely out of index. So I'm gonna show you something real quick here. AEM inline fuel pump. You see these fittings are O-ring. O-rings don't need to be tightened like crazy. Watch this. All you need to do, thread it in, Grab the 11 16 wrench, done, that's tight enough. You don't have to wail on that fitting. Same thing for the inlet. Thread it in, put a little lubricant on the O-ring, give it a small twist, and you're done. That's all you have to do. Another problem, we've seen pumps installed a little too close to the bottom of the tank, and if you get close enough, then you'll inhibit flow. I had this problem on my Studebaker, actually. I have a fuel cell in there and I had a little wrinkle in the bottom of the fuel cell and that wrinkle just happened to be right where the pump inlet was and I wasn't getting pressure and I was like, oh, what did I do wrong? And it is a matter of just lifting the pump up about a half an inch, make sure you're not wrinkled up and inhibiting the pump. The bottom line is make sure you install the pump correctly and get the proper power to the pump. Make sure you don't have any kinks in the fuel hoses or any leaks in the fuel hoses. Make sure your fuel pressure regulator is operating correctly and you'll have a good installation and you'll make all the power you need. It's a wrap. Thank you again for joining us. If you liked what you saw, hit the like button. If you wanna subscribe, subscribe. If you wanna share, share and hit the bell for notifications so you're first in line on the next video out. Thanks again, see you soon. Yeah, that was awesome. If you have ever seen me at the end of one of these things, I have a problem with this. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, I didn't say subscribe. <laughs> what did I say? It's not cool. This is terrible. I thought I did it.
This is so, this is so stupid. Okay.